Welcome to part one of this month's exciting design team project for the Digital Collage Club. In this video, we'll embark on a journey of repurposing and creativity as we create a charming little travel journal with a cover made from jeans and fabric. Together, we'll dive into the step-by-step -step process of constructing the cover and crafting a signature. So some of you might remember I made this jeans journal a while ago. It's one of my favorite journals actually that I've ever made. And this was also a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. I will link the videos of how I made this, including a full flip through down below for you. And for this journal, I had bought some jeans from the flea market, two pairs of girls jeans and a jeans jacket. And of course, I have a lot of material left. So today I'm going to start a smaller jeans journal combined with some Tim Holtz fabrics. I have already cut out this piece here, which is from one of the girls jeans pants. I will give you the measurements. So in inches, it's approximately nine and a half by six and a half. And in centimeters, it's approximately 23 and a half by 14. So this is going to be my outer layer. And I'm going to have several layers here. Since I have these slits here, which you could peek through, I wanted to have some interesting fabric underneath. So I'm choosing this one. I think I cut it actually a tiny bit bigger, yeah, just the tiniest bit. And this one is from the newest collection. So it's Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements from the series Embark. It's the correspondence one. And the special thing about this one is it's one of his canvas cloth materials. So it's thicker than the cotton one and it has really nice robust feel to it without being very heavy. Again, I will link the German online store quilting for you. For you below this video, this is where I get my Tim Holtz and other cool designer fabrics from. There's a really good variety there, so check out that store if you're interested in getting some cool fabrics. My third layer of the cover is going to be a piece of packaging. So this is one of those Amazon packaging pieces which are like extremely sturdy. They don't tear easily. This is not like a normal paper bag, but you could use a normal paper bag. So this is going to be my third layer. And for the inside, I'm going to take another piece of this correspondence canvas cloth. So that goes here on the inside like this. So I have four layers, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to sew all of these together, but first I'm going to glue them. And if you don't have a sewing machine, no worries. And you just glue them. It's absolutely no problem. I cut this paper piece a little bit smaller because I wanted to make sure that that is not visible on the edges. As always, I'm taking some textile glue. You can use PVA glue. The important thing when you glue fabric is that you do not just squirt it out like this and then add whatever other layer you're going to attach because you will see the glue through probably and you will be very unhappy. We don't want that. <laughs> I'm adding some water. Actually, I'm going to add the glue to the paper. I think it's easier to spread on the paper than on the canvas. So if you don't sew, then you just glue. And you want to make sure your whole surface is covered every little bit. And you want to work fairly fast because it dries quickly because we're adding such a thin layer. Making sure there's no bubbles, no wrinkles. I'll 
Okay, then we put glue on the other side. Then we add our second piece of correspondence fabric. And for this last layer, I will add the glue onto the jeans material and not on this one because I don't want any glue over these pieces. I want these pieces to stay loose. And by the way, this is how the jeans was when I bought it. I did not fray this myself. I have to work really fast for this. It's immediately drying. Maybe I'll do one half and then I'll do the other half. So this now makes a very sturdy cover with my four layers and here we can peek through to the canvas cloth. So then I'll take this to my sewing machine and stitch around the cover probably two or three times. So now we have this. So I went around it twice with a running stitch and then the third time I alternated between a running stitch and a zigzag stitch. So that's the outside, that's the inside. And for my closure, I want to use this button, which was on the jeans jacket. I got this off by taking some pliers and just yanking it off. It did take a little bit of force, but now I have this and this is going to go here but I want to add another square piece of fabric underneath and I'll use the same correspondence canvas cloth for that. I like this piece here with this round stamp. Originally I thought I was just going to cut a square but now I'm thinking would it be nicer to just wrap it around like that maybe? I kind of like that or not have it wrap around but have it go a little bit outside of the cover i like that and i have my button here and this would be cut off yeah i really like that so i'll just fold this in and fold this over and then we'll cut this piece off And that can then lay it like that. Yes. Okay, so again, I'm going to sew this and you can just glue it together. You don't want to sew. So I sewed around it three times and now I have this little square, which is going to go here and I'm going to adhere it again with my textile glue. And since this is a thick piece and I need it to really stay in place since I'm not sewing it on. I'm going to use my textile glue without thinning it down and then add that here. Then we need a hole here for our button. I'm going to do this with my crocodile. I'll use the big hole and that should be able to go through all of my layers. Yes, easily. I love this thing. And then I'll also add a bit of glue on both sides of my hole to make sure that this button will stay put. It doesn't go in that easily, so I don't think it would actually move, but just to be sure. Oh, I can't even get it through now. Okay, this is not working. Let's try it without the glue first. <laughs> When I tried it just through the jeans layer, it worked just fine. It was perfect, like it went in, but it wasn't in so loosely, but now with multiple layers, it doesn't really wanna go in, no. <laughs> okay, so what do we need to do? We need to cut the hole a little bit bigger, not too big because we do want the button to be in there very snugly. But I will try to just cut it a little bit more. Give it a little bit more wiggle room. Maybe I can expand it a little bit like this. All right, let's try this again. 
Okay, we're almost there. Come on. Yes, yes. It worked. I'm happy it didn't go in so easily. That means it won't come out so easily either. <laughs> yeah, that is in there nicely. Oh, great. And I think once the glue dries, it will make it even more secure. Okay, I'm very happy about this. I don't know yet if I will be adding anything else to the cover. I was thinking of adding a pocket on the back. So this is from one of the girl's jeans. I did take off the flap that was here because that was just too bulky. So maybe I will attach this on the back because that's fun. But I'll decide that I think at the end. And I recently posted a video. It's one of my junk journal snacks videos, which I will link for you below, where we made this tag, this Japan tag together. So this is also made with fabric. As a background here, we have the memoranda receipt fabric, which has a lot of blues and greens and grays. This little piece here is from the Wallflower Botanical and some jeans. And on the back of this travel tag, I have the monochrome subway signs fabric. And on the back side here again is the subway signs fabric and a piece of the Wallflower Botanical. I did add this little piece here afterwards because that was just too empty. This is just some of the thread from the jeans. And then I added this cute butterfly charm here on the bottom. I do want to mention again that this whole booklet and the tags and everything was inspired by Susie from Shabby Soul. I will again link her channel below because she's such a huge inspiration for me. So what I did then off camera is to make another tag in the same way that I made this one. So I covered both sides with fabric. Again, this is the Wallflower Botanical fabric in the back of both sides. This is a subway sign one. And inside I made this little booklet. This is part of the kit from the Digital Collage Club called Travel Time Folios, Cards and Ephemera. I will show them to you again here. For those of you who may be new here, the Digital Collage Club is an exclusive membership-based website offering a vast collection of royalty-free digital craft supplies. When you sign up for either a yearly or lifetime membership, you gain instant access to a treasure trove of unique images and resources. Every week, new images are added, providing you with fresh inspiration. The best part is you can even sell the craft items you create using these images. Now let's talk about the membership options available. You can choose between a one-year membership or a lifetime membership. With the lifetime option, you pay once and gain unlimited access to all the images and tutorials for a lifetime. In the video description box below, you'll find discount codes for both membership types. I want to mention that if you use these links and codes, I receive a commission which greatly supports my small creative business. Thank you so much if you decide to sign up or have already joined in the past using my link. Just a reminder to receive the discounts, be sure to use the provided link. Thank you for considering the, the Digital Collage Club and supporting my creative journey. And I added this tiny clip here. I thought I didn't have any left, but I found a couple more. So I'm so happy that I could add this here to keep this closed. As you can see, I stitched around it twice and it opens like this. And on the inside is again a part of the Wallflower Botanical fabric. And this was just perfect because this is an ID card, which of course you need when you're traveling. And it feels really nice because it's fabric so this just folds up so 
this is what the fold out looks like from the digital kit you can find that kit linked below so that gets that little clip on top to keep it closed and that fits perfectly in this little pocket then on the front here, I added the Mexico card. Underneath is jeans material and I sewed around it twice. And then I added this adventures label here. And on top, I added a piece of the Wallflower Botanical fabric by just stapling it with tiny staples. And I joined these two by cutting two rectangular pieces of the Wallflower Botanical fabric. I sewed them together, then I glued one end here to the back side of my tag and I glued the other part in between the two layers of my tag. So before I adhered this fabric onto this tag, I added the fabric in between and then I sewed over it. I first glued it and then I sewed over it. So now this becomes a signature. We'll do that with another signature today so you can see how I did that. So that will go in here, maybe at the beginning. I'm not sure if I'll have it like this or if I'll have it like this. We'll see when it comes together. For my next signature, I want to use these two cards. These are left over from my previous design team project which was this one right here. So I had made a whole bunch of tags and cards using my bubble technique and I had these left over. I will link a video of how I made this for you below as well. This has a tab binding without any sewing. And I will also leave a link to my bubble dyeing video for junk journals for you below so that you can see how to use this technique. In this case, it turned out super grungy, but it doesn't always look this grungy. So you can see different examples in that bubble dyeing video. So I have cut these down just a little bit from their original size to fit in here. So basically these are going to form my next signature and they're going to be connected with fabric as well. So let's put this aside for now. I chose these two cards from this kit to go on the front sides here. I've actually never been to Chicago. I've been to so many of the states in the USA, but never Chicago as far as I can remember. And I've also never been to Australia. I'm not sure I'll make it that far, <laughs> but I would love to. So for this one, I've already cut another piece of the correspondence canvas cloth. And I'm going to add this underneath here. But I want to add this as a flip up. So I'm going to rough up the edges a little bit like I did with the other tag. So I'm just going to tear this in some places, wrinkle it up just a little bit. That will just help it come to life a little bit more. I'll stress it with walnut stain. And then I'll sew that right onto the fabric. And I'll also stitch across here just for decoration. Again, if you don't want to sew, you just glue this on. So now I have this. And I want to add something underneath here as well. And since this is quite a dark background, I'm going to add some white embossing and I want to use something quite special, which is this sentiment here, which says, live in the moment and make it so beautiful that it will be worth remembering, which I think is perfect for a travel journal. And this is very special because I received this from my dear friend and little junk journal sister, Louise Heinzel. And it's super special because this is the first stamp collection by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous, and it has the name Nature's Moments CMS001. So that is so cool. So let's put this here. 
hopefully we will see it well i'm going to use my embossing dabber you could also just use your embossing ink pad if you have one one of these and go over it or even your embossing pen if you have one. If you don't have any materials to emboss, you just stamp it. So I want to make sure everything is covered, obviously. I should probably use an acrylic platform because in this case, I of course want the whole stamp to print well. Don't need an, a distressed look for this. First time using this stamp. Oh, but it looks good. Oh no. Okay, um, it's the wrong way around. Okay, then I guess uh, I'll have to change things around. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Let's add some white embossing powder. Mine is from Ideen mit Herz, which is a German brand. Oh wow, at the moment it's super hard to see. I am curious what this will look like when it's embossed. Okay, this now was a happy accident because as I mentioned, I wanted this to be white and I mixed up my white embossing powder with clear embossing powder. It says clear, it's not white. <laughs> but they are so easy to mix up but thankfully it worked anyway and we can still read it actually i love the way it looks so this is now going to be the back side that's okay so then i have this on top and i can just glue that down on the top here open the glue bottle barbara <laughs> Okay, so this flips up now and we have this sentiment, which looks very cool. And I usually do not clean off my stamps if I just use regular ink, but with this embossing ink, it gets very sticky. So I like to clean that with a baby wipe. Good as new. So for this one, I'm now wondering, should I put it on the back as well? No, I'll just put it here as planned. And I want to add some fabric scraps around this. So I have some here that I've already prepared. So basically, I just want to frame this card with some fabric. And then I also printed out some of these tickets. There's a whole sheet with tickets and I printed these at 50% this size. They're still large enough and I just tore it in half and I'm going to put half up here and half maybe here. So I'll do my best to glue these down as they are without moving them. Not so easy. Maybe I'll take these off first because I'll remember where these are. Whoops, see, it's already moving. And then just try to lift these. I don't want any glossy spots. So wherever I see that I went over it with the glue, I'm going to rub it with my cloth here. Alternatively, you could use matte medium then you don't have to worry about that. Then I'll do the same thing with this card. Just bend it out of shape a little bit. Add my walnut stain. And this time I'm not going to sew it. I'll just glue it right on. For the back side of this one, I'm going to add a pocket. I've already cut a piece of the Subway Signs fabric. I've sewed around it twice. And before I glue that on, 
I'll also add two of these tickets and I'll just staple these on. And then I'll take my fabric glue and just glue around the three edges. And to put in there, I'm choosing these two pieces of ephemera. There's a whole page with just postcards and these are printed at full size. But I want to add something on the backs here. So this one I've inked up already, but I want to add some more interest. So I'll ink up the edges of this one as well. And then I want to add a little bit of color. Let's add a cloth underneath. Then I'll add some water. And I'll add some of this Stormy Sky Distress Oxide Spray. And a little bit of frayed burlap. And we'll just let that run a little bit. This is what we have once it's dried, nice and grungy. And I'm going to stamp emboss on this again. This time I'll try to actually use the white embossing powder. <laughs> and I want to use two of these stamps. These are also Tim Holtz and they are from the Mini Blueprints Words. I will try to find these for you and link them below if I can. And I want to use this airplane one and this camera one because I think they both go really well with our travel theme. So I'll use my embossing dabber again. Yeah, I hope we'll see it well enough. Oh yeah, looking good. And I'll do the second one so that I can then emboss both of them at the same time. Yep. Oh, that's going to be great. Okay, let me heat emboss both of these. So there they are. They turned out really well. I'm very, very pleased with these. So I also want to add a little postage stamp here. I cut this little mushroom stamp out from the kit so I can just glue that down. I'll just use this one, my art glitter glue, because it's easier to apply. <laughs> so cute. So these can now both go in here. So then we also need something for the back side here. And I found this little brown paper bag in my stash. And that fits here actually perfectly. So I'm going to add this as a double pocket. And we can add something up here and we can add something here later when I glue it down. But of course I want to add some interest here as well. So I will again add some water. And this time I'll use Walnut Stain and Salvaged Patina Oxide Sprays. This is what it looks like once it's dry. And I think that looks super interesting. And again, I'm going to add some white embossing. And this time I'm going to use this Crackle Stamp. It's, this is by Crafty Individuals. This is their website. And the number of the stamp is CI116. I will link this for you below as well. This is from the UK and they do not come mounted. So when you order these, you only get the red part, 
but not the foam but you can order that either from them or from amazon or some other place separately and then mount them yourself that does make them a little bit cheaper but you do have to put in the extra effort so again i'll use my embossing dabber it might help to <laughs> open it up oh my goodness <laughs> Things you do on video. <laughs> okay, this one I think I'll do without the acrylic block because for this one I don't care if it's a perfect impression and this is just easier. That already looks interesting. Adding the white embossing powder. Super cool, don't you think? As a focal point, I'm going to add this little image. Again, this is printed at 50%. I've already crunched up the edges. And I will also add a piece of the correspondence canvas cloth like that. So I'll just glue these two on. And before I glue this down, I'm going to think about how to connect these two as a signature. So I cut two pieces of fabric approximately the same size. So it's approximately as tall as my cards. And I cut this about two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters. I did not measure that. I just kind of decided that's how long they should be. <laughs> And the first thing I'm going to do is to sew them together. Oh, by the way, on one side I have the Subway Signs fabric. And this one here is also a really cool one. It's called London Gridlock. And it looks like this. Very, very cool fabric as well. So I'll go ahead and sew these together as always. Feel free to glue them if you don't want to sew. So I've sewn this together and now I can just glue one side here and the other side is going to go here. So that way they are connected. And it doesn't really matter which side you glue it on. If you think about it in advance, just make it work on one of your sides. And if you forget, and you just see where it works better. So in this case, it works better on this side because here I have the tickets. So I'll just use my fabric glue again and glue that here. You want to make sure you glue this well, obviously. And then I'll add glue on this side. And glue this on. And lastly, I'll glue down my paper bag. So I'll leave this side open. So we have a pocket here and we have a pocket here. And we have a signature that we can either have like this or like this. So that will go in here and let's say this will go in front maybe, I'm not sure yet. So we have this, this, this flips up, this, these come out, we have this on the back, we have a little tag with the little folder and the back of our cover. So two signatures so far. Thank you for joining me for part one of our DIY jeans travel journal tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the process of creating the cover and signature as much as I did. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as part two is released. I can't wait to continue this creative journey with you and see how your own journals come to life. Thank you for your incredible support and for being part of this amazing community. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.